We've got just four weeks to get this car ready for Mopar Sunday, and I haven't bolted a single thing to it. That's right, by the time you see this, we'll have less than four weeks to get this car ready for Mopar Sunday. And it's not like I've been sitting on my butt, I'll tell you what, we've been chasing around, finding parts everywhere, the blocks off at the machine shop getting ready to come back to us. Um, we've got some pistons on the way, actually they'll be here today. Yes, we ordered some pistons because we decided we're not going to shave the block, we're not going to deck it and all that sort of stuff. And the reason we didn't go for pistons originally is because we couldn't find them. We could not find them in the time frame that we needed. We were kind of like, we're in a rush to get this done. We, don't, we can't find the right part number pistons and that sort of thing. But then someone sent me a link to another part number and it turned out Summit had one set left in the oversize we need. So we hit the button and got them sent here and they'll be arriving today. So I'm gonna whip them down the machine shop later today. But yes, we're getting pistons. So that means no block decking, no head decking, no manifold modifications, we'll be able to use all this stuff at a later date if we need to, you know, so if I want to go stroke a crank or whatever, all this stuff is usable at a later date. So, everyone that's complaining to me that we're going to do all this decking and stuff and why not buy a proper set of pistons, we're doing it, okay? We're buying proper pistons, okay? And we're going to end up with about 10.7 to 1 comp. But, here's a bit of interesting stuff, well, there's the original workshop manual that uh, Dad had with the car. But uh, Mum found the original paperwork for the car the other day and I had a look at it last night and it was actually really cool. So from what I worked out, Dad bought this car in about 2008 or whatever and these are the insurance documents from the people that had it before. And their last name was Harris. The car was in Queensland. Um, there's a lot of receipts here for various things like it's had ball joints and shocks and stuff done well in 2008 so you know all this original stuff here but some of the original paperwork here from the car from when the car was purchased right so this is the original owner's document and it was sold to a family by the name of Harris so we essentially bought well dad bought this essentially off the original owners it was delivered to them on the 13th of June, oh, 13th, yeah, 13th of June, 1969, a year before I was born. So, how cool is that? It's got the original reg uh, number for it there. It was sold by Austral Motors in Queensland. But yeah, so all this original paperwork's here and it's really cool, you know? It's like, here's an original owner's manual for the car. Tells you all about the car, how to use all the features. Not that there are many features. I don't think it even has a heater. But yeah, so all the specs there, original specs. I mean, it's hard to find this stuff even online now. So, you know, to find an original book is pretty cool, actually. It had the original engine specs there. So a 273 V8 in this car, if you'd optioned it, would have been 195 horsepower. Uh, the six cylinder, we got the high performance six cylinder, so it's 160 horsepower six cylinder. And then you had the option of the uh, low performance six, which was 145 horsepower. But we're gonna put 400 horsepower in this thing. So that's gonna be pretty amazing. So yeah, all these cool original documents, all this stuff, uh, lots of receipts for, they've obviously had some brake issues with this car in the past because I've found it, several different receipts for uh, brake replacement parts and stuff like that. So, and we're doing that again. You'll see that later in this episode that uh, we're doing some brake modifications. But how cool is it that I have all this original documentation for this car? So. When it had all this stuff done to it, it had 90,000 Ks on the clock. So I um, might have to stick my head in, have a look at the odometer and see where the kilometres are right now. Right, so the Ks 
are at 96,000 right now. So in 2008, it had a whole bunch of stuff done to it and it's done less than 6,000 Ks since then. It's not too bad. So I shouldn't have to replace too much in the front end, although I am doing the ball joints and uh, I'll show you what's going on with them later in this video. But yeah, it's a head fuck. Excuse my French. Anyway, we need to go get some more parts. So let's hit the road and uh, go grab some stuff. Okay, so today we're gonna do some road tripping stuff. Uh, we're gonna go down to Eagle, get some parts for our motor for Dad's ute. We've also gotta take the uh, block down to Top Talk and do all that sort of thing. But we're coming up on 15,000 Ks in our Isuzu D-Max. And it's actually been really good. We've towed a few times, been out to Haunted Hills. You'll see that video soon and a few other things you know they did a big massive towing test and they hauled turbo taxi out there with this girl and it's really economical actually like this thing gets almost a thousand k's to a tank which means i don't have to fill up all week it's pretty amazing it's the only car i've ever had that i can drive to work every day all week and not have to fill it up so once a week fill up that's a good deal so yeah no she's been a good old girl Loving it, and uh, yeah, we need to get in it, go for a drive. All right, so we're down here at Eagle Auto Parts today. We're going to grab some stuff for our small block build into Dad's ute. Now, if you've never seen inside this place, it has most, uh, pretty much the most impressive showroom of any speed shop in Australia, in my opinion. So. Let's go in, have a look, we'll go grab some parts, but yeah, prepare to be blown away. Better mask up for this one. Whoa. Check it out, I mean, walk in the door, small block Chevy, small block Ford. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, well, we definitely need them. New set of Welsh plugs and block plugs for our small block. Love it that they've got them on the shelf. Great stock of ARP bolts. Yep, we can certainly use them. Nice. That's the one we use on the Ford 40s and all that stuff. Yeah, so. cool. Yep. And the best part is check out down here. The Wonderland. Look at it. Crate motors. Including a super rare quad cam Corvette engine. I mean, I don't think that one's for sale. But yeah, these were uh, super cool back in the day. Jukebox, small blocks of plenty, superchargers. Mustang, Cuda. I'm sure there's a whole bunch more hold, hiding around the place. I love this bar stool. V8 bar stool, gotta love it. So many carbies. Oh well, we've had enough fun. Let's head back to the counter. Ooh, EFI. Thanks a lot. Right, we you. will certainly be back because we've still got, this is going to be one of those builds. So. I'll look up for the 904 for you. Yeah, the rocket shutter fold down, so it'll be awesome. All right, thanks Matt. Oh, yeah. All righty, back to the workshop. So, what did we get from Eagle? Timing cover, most important. So, brand new one. 
nice and fresh. Look at that. Ready to go. That's handy. So you got a timing cover. Uh, got a couple of adjustable like push rod checkers here. So when we set up our push rod length, I didn't wasn't sure whether we were uh, a short one or a long one. Don't know. But we've got a couple of push rod checkers there. Full Welsh plug and oil plug gallery set. Distributor hold down clamp. Sump bolts. Always uh, handy to have and always a pain in the butt to find. And then some spark leads and a little extra bolt Matt gave us which he recommends for using with that hold down clamp. So that'll be handy. But yeah, leads, definitely need them. So, whole bunch of goodies there. Ah, <sighs> well, we really got pretty much everything we need now for this ute build. Now we need to just get that engine block down to top torque. Okay, so it's been a bit, pretty busy time. We've already got that engine block down to top torque so they can do their thing. Hopefully those pistons will be here very shortly and we can whip them up and they can sort them out. Uh, we've had another delivery in the meantime and I know you guys love the deliveries, but we've got a radiator for this beast from the guys at Aussie Desert Coolers. And check it out. Look at it. How cool does that look? So twin thermo fans already got a shroud built into it as well. So yeah, this thing is going to cool our ute down no problems at all. In fact, let's sit it in the front and have a look. So Norm and the team at Aussie Desert Coolers always look after us with these things. They do basically the best radiators in Australia, so never have any issues with them. Alrighty, so that'll fit in there perfectly. All we've got to do is work out our positioning and where we're going to put the holes. So they don't come with the holes pre-drilled. Norm and the team let you decide where you're going to mount it. So that's going to be our plan. So once the engine's in position, and I know where it all lines up with the water pump and all that sort of stuff, we will uh, position the radi radiator finally drill our holes and we'll mount it. But yeah, that will keep it cool on its big road trip. That'd be awesome. So shiny. So we literally have a ute load of parts and I haven't bolted a single thing to this car. It is a little bit frustrating, but that is kind of the way it goes. Most of that stuff is engine stuff or engine orientated. Uh, we have to sort out the brakes though. As I mentioned before, this car's had a bit of brake work done to it in the past and uh, it needs brake work done again. Like we, it's got four wheel drums. Yes, I had a big block in this with four wheel drums, just like the muscle cars of old. But anyway, we're gonna get discs on the front. As you may have noticed, it doesn't have a master cylinder there, so we've got to get a new master cylinder. Uh, got to sort out some disc brakes. Now, our Rust-Oleum Valiant has a disc brake front end on it. We were never going to use that disc brake front end for that car because it's going to be even more powerful than this thing. Like, so it's tubbed, it's going to have a serious engine, it's going to be the real deal. So, you know, I was ne never planning to use that solid disc front end on that car. Um, I was really going to bin it, but it's holding the car off the ground at the moment. So what I'm going to have to do is go home. It's going to cost me a fortune to put really good brakes on this. Uh, I'm on a budget. I'm going to reuse that stuff. I'm going to have to rebuild some of it. So I'm going to have to go home, pull out that front end, bring it back here, and we'll probably put new ball joints in it, new bearings, all that stuff, get the discs machined. Unfortunately, I've already thrown away the calipers, so I've got to go source a set of calipers. Uh, I actually already have them here somewhere. I've got them from the guys at Valiant Spares and some rebuild kits. So, yeah, we're going to make this happen, but, yeah, I need to go get some parts and uh, get some stuff off that other wagon. Bum. So here we are at home with the wagon that must not be named. Uh, it's got a disc brake front on it, so it's a VE wagon, same model as the Ute. 
So it's got a disc brake front on it. We were never going to use this disc brake front end on this car because it's going to be a pretty quick car when we're done with it. Um, so I figured those, you know, brakes weren't going to be up to the task. But I'm on a tight budget. I don't have a lot of time. Finding parts is kind of hard these days. It's, it is hard to get parts. So let's whip the front end off this thing so we can use it on the ute. So I'm going to have to, obviously, wheels off. Stub axles out, so they use different stub axles from drum brake to disc brake. So I need the stub axles from this and need the discs themselves. Obviously, we've already made the mistake of tossing the calipers, so I've bought another set of calipers. But yeah, shouldn't take me too long to whip this off. I think I'll just hook in and get it done. <laughs> Okay, that's one side. makes two. So we'll get these back to the carnage workshop, clean them up, get some new ball joints in them, get them on dad's ute. So we have our stub axles and our disc brakes here from that uh, the other wagon. Now all this stuff's pretty filthy, we're gonna have to chuck it in the, uh, the old bead blaster and clean it up. But before I do that I want to inspect the actual hubs these do have a problem with spinning the uh, the races sometimes, the bearing races. If they do that, they're stuffed. They do make new ones. I want to avoid trying to buy new ones if I can help it, but, you know, I need to do a bit of investigating first. If they're fine, I'll use them. If they're not, I won't waste any more time with them. I'll just go down and buy a new set of hubs and discs. Gonna need a bigger shifter. See, the right tool for the job always gets it done. So we've measured up our discs and they will be able to be machined. They're within spec, um, depending on how much, of course, they take them down to. They can go down to 11.2 mil, I think, was the maximum or minimum they're allowed to go down to. They're like 
12 and a half mil now. So they've still got plenty of meat on them. So I took them down to get them machined and the guy said, oh, I can't actually machine them because you pulled the bearing cups out. Yes, that thing I just did. So what I'm going to do is smack some new bearing cups in it. Just went down to Valiant Spares and grabbed some new bearing sets. So, bearing, bearing. So let's put some fresh cups in these things. And then we can go get them machined. This is what my life is like. So just using our little bearing and seal driver kit from Hair and Forbes. It's got a lot of use lately, I've got to say. So it's a perfect tool for doing this. Okay, flip her over. Mm. That one's not the tightest, is it? Guess we will just send it and see how we go. All right. Now they're in. I can take them back to the uh, brake machining place and get them to machine our discs. Yay. So now that we've got our discs ready to go off to the machinist, we're going to machine those discs. We just got a delivery. Yes, the promised pistons are here. So let's crack open the box. Let's have a quick look before we uh, do a run, run up to Top Talk. I want to look at these beauties. I've got a couple other little things too, just engine building things. Like this very nice hammer for putting pistons in and stuff like that. It was like 20 bucks, but yeah, that'll be cool. There's also a little, where are they? Conrod bolt protectors. So little protectors that go around the, around the conrod bolts and stop you from marring your crank when you're sliding the conrods in. They're like two bucks. So why wouldn't I buy them? You know, two bucks just to make my engine building a little bit more professional. So, you know, this sort of thing when you're ordering stuff from overseas, you know, if you get opportunities to, you know, add a bit more to your tools for not a lot of dollars why not you know so new engine building hammer some rod bolt protectors you know 20 something bucks why not and then there's the real goodies okay so we've got some kb pistons there keith black all right so they're hyper eutetic pistons now for the 318 Chrysler, they do two part numbers. They do the KB167s and then the KB399s. The KB167s, usually they're just a flat top piston that come up to zero deck height or close enough to, and they'll give you a comp ratio of somewhere between 9.7, 10.1, 10.2 to one, depending on you know deck height and head sizes and stuff like that. These are the 399s, so these, a domed so even more compression so we worked it out we're going to end up with 10.7 to 1 comp with our heads our gaskets all that sort of stuff which is plenty i mean 10.7 it's not too much but we're going to be getting every bit of comp out of this thing that we can which means we're going to have every bit of power out of this thing that we can which is awesome all the power so we've gone from a, a 318 that was going to be, you know, maybe, maybe this will be all right, to a, yeah, baby, this is going to be a 318. 
Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh yes, look at that domey goodness. Got to pull one out of the bag and try and not drop it on the floor. But yeah, 60 thou over. They'll even work with the rings that we've already got, which is, uh, yeah, great. But yeah, bit of coating on the side skirts, but look at that dome. Oh, yeah. Feel that domey goodness. And 60 thou up, of course. So we're going to take them down to the boys at Top Talk. They're going to um, measure them up, measure up the bores, adjust the bores as necessary. They might have to hone them a little bit more to get the right clearance. Uh, when we get to putting these things together, we'll talk about that a bit more because these, with these pistons, the big deal is they are very particular to their ring gap. You gotta right, run the right ring gap. If you run the wrong, too tight ring gap. Yeah, and that's the thing that people did, uh, made that mistake very early on when these pistons first hit the market. They used the wrong ring gap. The rings would butt due to thermal expansion and stuff like that and they tear the top off the piston. So they got a bit of a bad rep there at the start. But now that people are aware, it's less of a problem and they are, you know, it's KB. You know, they're a rep reputable company. So anyway, we're gonna run these up down to, or up to Top Talk. Get them ready for our engine. And you're gonna see all that on a future episode of Carnage. <laughs>